which is probably why, according to a brand new poll conducted by the Washington Post, ABC News, six in ten Americans are opposed to taking any military action. Here with reaction tonight is a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Senator, good to see you. Welcome aboard. Glad to be with you, Sean. Let me use the, let me use the words of the White House. This is not open-ended, no boots on the ground. This is days, not weeks. And by the way, this is not about regime change. So that raises the question, <laughs> what are we doing well, this for? Well, it's sort of like we've announced in advance, oh, it's going to be just a little war, not a big war, just a little war, and it won't last too long, and we're not going to have regime change. So we really have no military objectives, but please support us in this little war that the president needs to have so he can save face because he drew a red line. That's not a compelling reason. I don't think they made compelling arguments today. Okay. We also heard today that Syria is moving a lot of their weapons uh, into areas where there's a high population of civilians. Are we uh, planning on uh, the potential collateral damage, uh, or do we have any chance even to get those weapons? Well, I thought Senator McCain made a great point. He and I don't always agree, but he made a wonderful point. He looked at John Kerry and he said, you know what, it's not very good military strategy to announce in advance it's going to be limited and let them know it's coming so they can move all of the things you're planning on bomb. They can move to other sites. It is kind of ridiculous when you think about it that that's the strategy that President Obama has. Well, didn't uh, Senator uh, McCain also suggest that uh, saying Allahu Akbar is similar to saying thank God? I didn't hear that part. In the, in, I don't think that was in our committee. That may have been in an It was interview. on Fox and Friends this morning. But, but I would say that they didn't make a compelling case for American interests. And I asked a couple of questions. I said, is it more likely that Israel will be attacked if we bomb Syria or less likely? I think it's more likely. Is it more likely that Turkey will be attacked or that Iran or Russia will be drawn into this? I think all of those bad scenarios are more likely to occur if, if the U.S. bombs Syria. So I really think that there's not a good outcome. And there's also not a, a clear entity that I think will be an American friend in the Syrian civil war. S Senator, it, not is it only more likely, it's probably probable at this point. Uh, both Syria and Iran have said they will retaliate against Israel. Did anybody ask Senator Kerry or Chuck Hagel or President Obama if, in fact, Israel is a victim of retaliation for any strike he makes, what effort he will put into defending Israel? Uh, his comment was Israel told him they could take care of themselves. But I want to make it less. I think Israel can. I, I, I think Israel has a strong national defense, and I think they can do well in any battle. But I don't want to involve Israel in a battle because they have so many enemies around them that I'm fearful that it could spin out of control. So my first choice would be to not involve Israel in a battle if we don't have to. All right, let's talk about the president didn't feel, even when he spoke on Saturday, that he necessarily needs to go to Congress, although I believe the Constitution is clear that, in fact, he does, and I think you agree with me on that. But there have been many examples, I'll put them up on the screen, and, and I want you to respond to this, of how the president has bypassed Congress since he took over. More recently with the, the mandate and Obamacare delay, the, the feds, uh, in the case of the pot mandatory minimum sentences in the, with the Justice Department, uh, recess appointments when you guys are in recess, the Mini Dream Act, Obamacare waivers, funding to Egypt, which I think was a, a bad mistake when they wouldn't say a coup is a coup. They've done it on gun control, funding Palestine, the Defense of Marriage Act, no child left behind waivers, NSA surveillance, offshore drilling. Now, it goes on and on here, and we'll put it up on the screen, but the, the well, point I'm making, why now? Is he trying to push the blame if this goes wrong onto you guys in the House and Senate? Well, I asked a very pointed question to John Kerry about this. I said, look, I want to be proud of the president. There haven't been that many times, but I wanted to be proud that he was asking for congressional authority, and I was for about a minute until I heard him also say, oh, but it's just a fake vote. If you vote against me, I'll still bomb Syria because I have all the authority I need. That troubles me because, you know, Madison wrote a lot about war, and Madison said that the Constitution supposes what history demonstrates, that the executive branch is most prone to war, therefore the Constitution gave that power to the legislature. And I don't think the president fully gets that. What could we possibly accomplish in something that's not open-ended, something that is going to be days, not weeks? Uh, what could possibly accomplished here? Is one of those things perhaps 
um, assisting the Islamic radical Islamists that, that are the likely successors to Assad? Well, you know, I'm a big stickler that Congress initiates war, but I think one of the problems of this resolution is, and this is where I agree with John McCain, this resolution is going to restrict the power of the president to execute the war. So while I think the president is limited on initiating the war, I think the president does have most, if not all, of the power on how to execute the war. So I think the resolution in narrowing the focus and saying, hey, it's just going to be a baby little small war, we're really not going to do too much, we're not going to have regime change, I think that's Congress actually getting too involved in how we would execute war. The big decision should be whether or not we initiate war. Well, we initiate it, and the consequences could be, if I'm asking this right, we could help the al-Qaeda uh, radical Islamic opposition. True or false? Yeah, al-Qaeda is on the sa same side as the Islamic rebels. I'm right. concerned uh, but that we could have a victor. Go but, ahead. But we could, also, we could also cause retaliation against Israel that could be rather severe, right? Absolutely. And I think we could also have a problem where Russia and Iran become more involved than they are already. Uh, okay. And we could have a broader conflict. And for what? Because the president drew a red line in the sand. Um, not a good situation. Senator, I think you're on the right side of this. Thank you. Thank you. And still ahead.